God sent Jesus Christ to do a short work on the earth. Jesus said, This generation will not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Jesus said, Some of you standing here will not taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Everything in the Bible already happened. Jesus pointed at that temple, not a future temple. We should be living for God today, not for Christ. Everything in the Bible is for the old world. All of it already came to pass. Everybody that wrote the things in the Bible said that Jesus Christ was returning in their time. Jesus Christ returned back then. He returned before 70 AD. Everything in the Bible was fulfilled within 40 years of Jesus saying all the things that he said. Jesus said, This generation will not pass until all these things are fulfilled. Everything that Jesus Christ said happened within 40 years of him saying it. He was talked about that temple. He said, Not one stone in this temple would stand upon another, not a future temple. Said that Jesus Christ was born. He came once in the end of the world to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And to anyone that looked for him, he would return again without sin unto salvation. Jesus came in the end of the world. They were living in the last days. The time was short. He said, This generation will not pass. Some of you standing here will not taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and said, May God preserve your whole body, souls, and spirits until the coming of the Lord, because they would still be alive. He wrote to them about the man of sin, because the temple was still standing back then. That's not to us. Jesus pointed at that temple, not a future temple. No, I'm not Muslim. I believe in following God. I believe in the Bible. It just already happened. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus said. That's what the apostles said. That's what history said. This is the Bible. This is Jesus. This is the apostles. This is history. All of it already happened. The book of Revelation is simple. All of it already happened. We should be living for God and God only. John was told to write the things which must shortly come to pass. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, Jesus Christ was the Son of God. What the Bible says about him is true. No, Muhammad was not sent after Christ. Jesus was the last prophet. <clears throat> Nobody else was sent. Not that had anything to do with the law. You guys went back to the law. It's not right. Shouldn't have gone back to the law. Jesus Christ already fulfilled all that. He was sent by God, born of a virgin, fulfilled everything, delivered the kingdom back to God. Mohammed shouldn't have gone back. No, they were talking about the Holy Spirit, the Comforter that was going to come. They weren't talking about Mohammed. And the Comforter that came was the Holy Spirit, and it sealed them until the day of redemption. It was the earnest of their inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Mohammed should have believed in God instead of getting mixed up in the Bible. He mixed you guys back up with the Law and the Prophets and Moses and Abraham and everything else. Every one of the disciples said that Jesus Christ was coming back in their time. Peter said, the end of all things is at hand. Be sober and watch. He said they were looking and hasting to the day of God. Thessalonians were told, may God preserve your whole body, souls, and spirits until the coming of the Lord. Timothy was told, keep this commandment without spot until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thessalonians were told, uh, you are not in darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Hebrews said, Gather yourselves together, the more so as you see the day approaching. After Jesus ascended, he pointed at, after he came back from the grave, he pointed at Peter and said, Peter, you're going to die. Peter looked at John and said, Well, what will happen to this man? What will he do? Jesus said, What is it to you if I let him tarry until I come? Islam is definitely just a creation coming from Christianity. Islam calls hell Gehenna. Gehenna was literally a trash dump outside of Jerusalem. Mohammed just ripped off from the Bible is all and didn't even know what he was talking about. They call it Gehenna for a reason. Because he ripped off the Bible and didn't know what he was talking about. There's not even a name called Christianity in the Bible. 
Peter said, if any man suffers as a Christian, let him rejoice. Paul told the governor, the governor said, Paul, you almost convinced me to be a Christian. He said, I would that you and everybody that heard me was. Acts said they were first called Christians at Antioch. So yeah, there's a name Christian in the Bible. Don't say things that you don't know. I do love Jesus, but Christians do not. Christians don't believe what he actually said or did. They twist all of his words. Everything Jesus said came to pass. The temple was destroyed. The believers fled. Um, the armies came. The Jews fell by the edge of the sword. They left Judea, not the whole world. Great wrath came upon that people. Everything that Jesus said already happened. He said, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Not one stone shall stand upon another. I definitely don't agree with that stuff. Um, man, you don't need Islam, dude. You guys need to stop dividing everybody into racial religions like Christians do. Just stop. You don't need to go back to the law. Jesus fulfilled all that so that you can have access to God yourself. You don't need to follow Muhammad. You're just as good as Muhammad. You've got access to God, too. As long as you guys have these religions, it's not going to happen. We're not going to have peace. You guys are going to bring a war over the Temple Mount. You, all the three Abrahamic religions, supposedly worshipping the same God, are going to go to war over the Temple Mount. It's going to be terrible. You all think it'll bring the end of the world. The Muslims think that the only thing left whenever they destroy the Dome of the Rock in Alaska so they can build a new temple is Jihad, Holy War. You guys believe that's where Muhammad ascended up into heaven and got his rules from God about prayer and everything like that. And then came back down and told you guys. Israel believes that that temple, that the Alaska and the Dome have to be destroyed so that the real Messiah can come because they don't believe in Jesus. And they believe it will bring the end of the world and Israel will rule the world through Jerusalem. Christians believe that that has to be destroyed so that a temple can be built so that Jesus can come and the Antichrist can sit in the temple. How many questions do you read? What are you talking about? They came to Jesus privately, is what it said. He was talking to them, David Parsons. They came to him privately, privily, to show him the things of the temple. He said, as for these things which you behold, not one stone in this temple shall stand upon another. They said, when shall these things be, Lord? What's the sign of your coming in the end of the age? He was talking to them. They were delivered up to councils. They were put to death. They heard wars and rumors of wars. There were pestilences. Plagues went through. I don't need to believe in Muhammad, man. I told you. Uh, just like Christian doctrine, your mind cannot wrap around the absurdity of the fact that Muhammad called hell. You guys believe hell is super vast and you can fall in it for many, many years. I don't know for eternity or what. But you guys use the word Gehenna because he ripped off the Bible. All he did was read the Bible and come up with his own religion. Muhammad is the closest the closest thing to Muhammad is probably um Joseph Smith. Muhammad Islam is just a sect of Christianity. Just with a different prophet. I've got nothing wrong with you guys' definition of Muslim. Throw away the book that you have and I'll agree with you. Go straight to God. Your definition of Muslim is somebody that goes to God and God only. There's one God, right? So forget about the book. Forget about Muhammad and go to God. How is my understanding lacking, man? Think about it. You tell me something that Jesus prophesied about that did not come to pass in the first century. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians or the Corinthians and he said, The time is short, brethren. Let those who have wives be as though they have none. Why were they acting like they didn't have wives? James said, The coming of the Lord draws nigh 2,000 years ago. James said, Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries. For you have heaped up treasures for the last days. Because they were living in the last days. They said, Now is our salvation nearer than whenever we first believed. Jesus told the priest at the Sanhedrin, after this you will see me coming in the clouds. The priest would still be alive. 
That's why they told them, that's why Peter said that God knew how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust until the day of judgment. Jesus said, Woe unto you, Chorazan and Bethsaida, for the day of wrath will be worse on you than it was for Sodom and Gomorrah. Chorazan and Bethsaida don't exist anymore because it already happened. It doesn't matter what questions they ask. Jesus said this generation will not pass until all things be fulfilled. Jesus said in Luke that whenever the armies came to trample the city underfoot for 42 months, like it said in Luke 21, he said these be the days of vengeance whenever all things written will be fulfilled. All things were written then. Jesus Christ appeared once in the end of the world. It was the end of the world. Paul said what were the uh, prophets written for? He said they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. They preached the gospel to the whole world back then. Jesus said once the gospel was preached unto all the world for a witness unto all men or all nations, then the end would come. Paul said have they not heard, verily they've heard, they're sounded out in all the world and for a witness unto the ends of the earth. He said the gospel which you have heard, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. The gospel was already preached, the end already came. That temple doesn't stand anymore, because Jesus said, Until heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law until all is fulfilled. That temple's not there anymore. Many jots and many tittles pass from the law, because it was all fulfilled. The dead in Christ were waiting under the altar, and they cried, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not avenge our blood on them which dwell on the earth? And he gave them white robes and said, Yet a little while until your fellow brethren are killed. That temple isn't there anymore, because it already happened. Now we all have access to God, Ronnie Falls, or Ron, Ronell Falls. We should all be going to God, not going back to religion. They took over Jesus' name after Jesus finished his work, and they made this religion. And they don't believe what Jesus said, and they do the exact opposite of what real Christianity was. And they spread this gospel through tyranny and genocide. And they said, accept Christ or die, that was the new gospel after Jesus left. Before Jesus left, they said our kingdom was not of this world, or else his servants would fight. <clears throat> what Jesus did was amazing, and I'm not telling anybody not to believe what the Bible says. I'm saying go back and read it and believe what it says. What about the pagans? Pagans should be going to God and God only. Pagans should make sure that they're honest all the time and tell the truth. A pagan religion, your religions have nothing to do with salvation, correct? You should make sure that you're always honest in your life. And you should seek truth always. Spirituality is fine, but spirituality doesn't make you good or evil. Many people are spiritual. It doesn't mean that you have truth or that you're good or evil. You can be evil spiritual or good spiritual. Funny thing about pagans is I've never met one that is as spiritual as I am. I get any answer to any question that I want. I pray for other people, get in the spirit and tell them what they're asking without them even telling me what the question is. So why not go to God if you want to be spiritual? I've got two pagan sisters. Whenever I showed them and told them about all the stuff that I do through God, they said, well, we've been trying that for years, you know. They've been that way for years, and they can't get it. God's more powerful. <clears throat> if it's finished, why is the world still wicked? Because Jesus Christ came to end sin, not evil. Isaiah 45 said God created evil. Um, Jesus did not come to end what God created. Light and dark darkness existed before Satan ever came on the scene, before Satan ever brought sin. Jesus Christ was an end of sin. We still have choice. We'll always have choice. That's why Solomon said, the generations come and generations go, but the earth abides forever. Hey, what's up, monster man? You live and breathe your spirituality. That's fine, man. There's a lot of spiritual people in the world. It doesn't bring you to truth, you know that. You know that spirituality isn't truth. You're a pagan, you've got to know that. You can do good spiritually, you can do evil spiritually. It doesn't mean you have truth at all. <clears throat> uh.
How are you doing this evening? Would you like to save Tony from his delusion? Would you like to join Tony? I I was just about to speak in tongues, but since you're here, I'm going to wait. Just kidding, man. (laughs) I still love you. (laughs) This is the Ecclesia. It's a gathering. You shouldn't speak in tongues. Oh. I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. <laughs> now, surely you are edified, but the other is not. <laughs> oh my God, what is going on here? I get a lot of attention from these predators. <laughs> I got yeah. attacked from all the preterists. You bring from, attention from, from, on from, yourself. You from, bring from, attention from, from, from What's his name? Um, <laughs> Jeff. I was Jeff. Uh, Jeff gets Bible a little Jeff yelling. And I, we, we fight it out all the time. Remember we <laughs> fought on, on a fantasy. What's our, uh, first century. All right. Um, you guys were there. so. I don't and think yet, Jeff... Yeah. Yeah. Jeff gets very stern and, you know, you have to understand, you know, everyone has a different personality. I don't believe Jeff's like trying to fight with people. Um, but well, then again, at other times I see him and he's like full out bull rage. Yeah. He's trying to, <laughs> never mind. I'm, I'm pulling back that comment. Never mind. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't, I don't have to fight with any of you guys because what I say is true. So it's simple. All right. I just let Jesus' words yeah, do the you, talking and you guys deny his so, words. So the, That's so all this, I gotta do. So this scripture don't apply to you, right? Where Jesus where uh in Peter somewhere it says when he reviled uh when Jesus was reviled, he reviled not again. And I'm sure you know what the word revile means, right? Yeah. So so that kind of uh, spirit of criticizing, abusive, angry, insulting manner is not it's not um uh, um what are your predators to whatever your belief? Uh, it's yeah, not. Most, it's not. It's not conducive to for a friendly uh, environment. Most Christians revile me all the time. I don't have to revile back. Well, you just reviled me. You just said uh, Tony's. Uh, I don't know. What did you just say before I came on? I said I hope to save you from your delusion. Yeah. It was a joke because you always say you hope to save me back to apostolic. Oh, I'm still, I'm still, that's still my target, my brother. That's still my prayer. Yeah, and my target is to save you from your delusion. I'm just saying what you're saying back to you. That's it. No, I'm showing you kindness because it is my endeavor. And you pray. think that I'm delude. You think that I have a delusion. You're no, trying never, to save me from it. No, no. Never okay. So you're trying to save me from something that's not a delusion. Why are you trying to save me from truth? I'm saying I want to put you back on the map, in the map or the road that you were that you were uh, that you were uh, engaged originally. Because I backslid, the... right? Yeah, yeah, that pathway was a good path. Because I believe the lie, right? No, Derek, you and my brother. I mean, one of the people that I can see here that actually was baptized in Jesus' name, spoke in tongues. You're still more or less considered my brother, but um, in a backsliding state. I do not. I don't know. I just hope that one day you'll start believing the words of Jesus. That's my hope. Because you and I were in the same road, and I see a lot of former apostolics in the uh, in this uh, in these in these TikTok. And uh, I don't know what would cause them to 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 move on to something uh, different. Maybe they found. Maybe they found the truth. No, because I know I've experienced the power of God, and for me to to embrace any other religious would be um, it would be absurd. You experienced power for sure. I don't deny right. the power that Christianity has, but it's not of God. What I mean, He said, "You shall have power after the Holy Ghost come upon you." That's mm-hmm. in Acts one eight. You know that. Oh. Um. A lot of other people had power. They called Simon the Sorcerer the great power of God back then. Yeah, but then didn't Peter curse him? Yeah. 
So, so what kind of power did he have that uh, this mysticism, this this uh, illusion? Uh, what kind of power did he have? The Bible never tells no, that's you. A, that's what I would say. Uh, Christianity is though; it's not power for truth. Well, I think you have youth pastor Nate. He could tell you otherwise. I don't know. He's gone, but he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, there's another. I love arguing with pastors. Is he still here? No, he's gone. He's a very good preacher, by the way. Very good preacher. No, he's still here. You, Pastor Nate. Yeah. Hold on, let me see how many followers he has. There's a lot of followers. Yeah, look at that. 10,000. <laughs> Just more than I have. So how long have you been in TikTok, dear? Because it's you only have 2,400. And you do more videos than I engage in. He said several TikToks. He just went to the bathroom. Oh, okay. It's because us Christians are being persecuted because it's tribulation, Tony. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, you have to realize that uh, 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 David was attacked by uh, by Saul, and he experienced some spiritual attack. Uh, the scripture says we that the devil. Uh, I think it's in what is in uh, Peter, First Peter five, First Peter five what, First Peter five what, twenty eight somewhere. It's about like a roaring lion seeking he yeah, may devour. Seeking he may devour. Yeah. Well, Tony, last time we talked, um, and I kept, I held you down to Luke 21, 20 through 24, and you couldn't explain it. Oh, well, yes, I did. No, you didn't. Okay, let's go, that, let's go over that one more time, because... Luke 21, 20 through 24. Let's go there. And I, I want you to tell me how that is for you today. Turn in the pages. Okay, so let me re reiterate what I said. Okay. Luke 21, 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. That's not you. That's not me. All right. They shall be led captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden of the Gentiles. Okay? We know that's referring to the... Uh, 70 AD prophecy. Right. Right. Yep. Uh, but and then it says, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right. Which was 42 mm -hmm. months. No. And the war from 66 AD until 70 was 42 months. No. The time of the Gentiles, he doesn't That's give you a specified time. How long that period? Yeah, he you, does. You you put you've put a number to it, but it doesn't say that. Revelation chapter eleven. John, arise, measure the temple, the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court that is without the temple, leave out for it is given unto the Gentiles, and they shall trample the city underfoot for forty two months until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Yeah, but that 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 is that's not fulfilled. You're you're saying <laughs> that happened seventy A.D., but that it to did. me that they trampled the city for forty two months. Exactly what Jesus said would happen. No. The times of the Gentiles, they trampled the city underfoot until the times of the Gentiles were fulfilled. The book of Revelation, the Gentiles trampled the city underfoot for 42 months until the times of the Gentiles were fulfilled. The war from 66 until 70 AD was 42 months. Okay. How long? Okay, so let me ask you. Now, how long did the Gentile dominate, dominate the holy city? 42 months until the oh. until the desolation at the end of the war desolations were determined until the temple was left desolate it was 42 months the jewish calendar back then was 12 months 12 no, months the jews of were never days. given jews were never given back power of their their own country they were Hans is john 11 John chapter 11, verse 48 said, if they let Jesus alone, the Romans would come and take away both their place and their nation. They were a nation back then. When were they a nation? 
that nation back in 1948. No. How do you get BC? They became a nation again. Because they were dispersed, they were destroyed, and the and the and the Gentiles, the Roman in specific, Titus, had occupied the whole territory, and they were never given back their 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 city. You're reading the prophets whenever they were dispersed and taken away into Babylon. They were no. fulfilled at being a nation again in 63 BC whenever General Pompey ousted everybody and allowed the Jews back into their land. No, they had Judean no. kings. Herod built the temple again, just like the prophets said. And then Jesus came and pointed at that temple, not a future temple. He said, not no. one stone in this temple will stand upon another. No, you're missing out. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. That means uh, they're going to be slaughtered, right? This, right. They're going to be at war. And shall be led captive into all nation. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, that means they, 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 they're being dispersed. <laughs> Right. And the city will be trod, uh, 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 trodden down of the Gentiles. So anyone that survived the Roman empires, uh, the Roman, the Romans divide them and say, "Hey, get out!" Because he didn't want they didn't want another uh, uh, insurrection, whatever you want to call it, to arise or another group to uh, formulate. So they, they dispersed them. They put them on boats and send them out of the send them out of the city. So they yeah, would never true. congregate again. So, so the Romans were smart because this, uh, the, uh, let me say this: the the Israelite, the Jews were were pain pain in their neck for many years. Uh, yeah, what you're saying is true, but that's the fulfillment. Okay, so they did not become a nation until 1948. They were a nation before that, man. When? You got to go by the Bible, John. You go read John chapter eleven. 11. Read verse forty-eight, and read a couple chapters, a couple verses before that, and a couple verses after. Saint John. Yeah. Yeah, John no. eleven forty-eight. John forty-eight is not going to tell you the revival of the other uh, because they did not become a nation again. No, it John told you that they were a nation back then. They were a nation, but in 70 AD, this is, if John is right in this, this was prior to the 70 AD, uh, you know, right. decimation. Israel's not going to become a nation again. They already became a nation before Jesus came. That was the fulfillment of the prophecies. Yeah, they were a nation, but then they were dispersed and they were not a nation. That's what this is telling you here. I know, that was, that was the fulfillment. Of course. They're not going to become a nation again. They were a nation. They are a nation as we speak today. That's not even real Israel. They're not even bloodline. They're they're all uh, they can't even trace their bloodlines. They're all mixed up. Are you, talking about, the, are you talking about the Ashkenazi Jews and what's the other uh, Jews? The Spanish ones. What do they call them? They were scattered. Yeah, I know they're scattered. <laughs> they haven't. They haven't had a temple since the time of Christ. They're not and going to have another temple. And, and Derek, it sounds like you are a Jew too, right? What? No, I'm not Derek. a Jew. Derek? Derek Jester? How can he be My name is translated from German. <laughs> My name's trans because it's translated from German. Oh, translated because it's a German name. And yeah. Jester, I thought maybe I, that was a Jewish name. No, that's, that wasn't even, that didn't come about until Middle English. But, um, <laughs> uh, jesters actually, I come from jesters. They danced in the castles and stuff, you know, jesters, court jesters. Danny okay. K. Oh, so you're part of some sort of royalty? <laughs> no, we were the ones that got Officer? beheaded if we weren't funny enough. <laughs> 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 Why are you so funny? <laughs> yeah, funny old he, he laughed at it, so I laughed. <laughs> no prophets of either becoming a nation again. Um, but they are somewhat what of a nation today. We know that. They might but be one, but there's no prophecy saying that they would. 
Man, where is that biblically? Where where can you show the future of Israel? You can't go by 1948 with the fig tree generation. That is a bunch of indoctrination. Uh, uh, okay, well, they're not a full, full, um, what do you call it, 12 tribes. They're not a full 12 tribes in Israel right now, I, I believe. They were back then. Yeah, they were. I agree with you. So what is your point? My point is... What is, they what is, start what is the problem? Show me one prophecy outside of 70 AD. Just one. Just one. I will show you in Revelation that they will become a nation after the, the thousand, uh, uh, thousand year uh, millennium, which is still coming. New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem is heavenly. No, not, not, not New Jerusalem. We're talking about where Satan is bound for a thousand years and, and uh, the Jews are still expecting their conquering Messiah. Okay. Yeah. Let me do this, Tony. So you're saying that God's prophecy um, from Jesus to now was what, 2,000 years roughly, 1950? 2,000 years almost, okay. So that prophecy from Revelation, we're expecting that now within 2,000 years? Yes, we're still expecting that prophecy to fulfill. Okay, all right. Do um, you, you have your Bible with you? Yep. Ezekiel 12, 23 through uh, 28, I believe. Okay. What is that going to prove? It's going to show you that Ezekiel was um, um, prophesying, and um, the people uh, were tired. It was too long with between prophecies, and he said, "I will shorten the days." So when I say something's going to happen, it's going to happen. So you can't say that it's going to be two thousand years because that's, that's why you know you know the book of. Daniel is right after Ezekiel. Daniel was told to close up his um, prophecies. John was told to leave them open. Daniel was told the day, the, um, the end um, was a long time or whatever. John was told to not seal it because it was going to happen soon. So if you look at Ezekiel 12, uh, 23 to, through 28, I'm, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, um, God says it. I'm shortening the day, and I, I, I even believe it says, um, uh, I want to say, uh, the time is at hand. I want to believe that it says it. I haven't read it in a while, so you know, I don't own a Bible, so you know, you have to bear with me. Thus saith the Lord of God, there shall none of my words be prophesied anymore, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. That's verse 28. Yeah, because um, Ezekiel was telling God that, you know, everyone's complaining because the prophecies aren't being fulfilled on time. So God says, well, I'm going to shorten it. So if you go back to 23, go back to 23. Don't just read 28. You got to go back to 23 and you have to read 23 through 28. Because it gives you a better description. Actually, if you read, you know, Ezekiel 12, you just. You can see it. You can see where it's coming from, but if you go from twenty three to twenty eight, you'll understand a little bit more. <laughs> really, it's this simple, though. The dead in Christ were waiting under the altar. The temple's not there anymore. They were crying, "How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not avenge our blood on them who dwell on the earth?" He said, "Yet a little while until your fellow brethren be killed." They were under that altar because they knew that's where Jesus Christ would descend, descend from heaven and destroy the man of sin that sat in the temple. They knew that the way into the holiest of all was not yet manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. In other words, once the temple was destroyed, the way into heaven was made. So they were waiting under the altar. Where are the dead in Christ waiting today? Because if <laughs> Jesus hasn't returned, nobody's uh, in heaven yet. Uh, I, you know, this, this predator's thing has some validity, but it is not half half you through it, bro. We're walking you through it. Come on, Tony. No, half off, because Revelation shows Jesus Christ coming, Revelation 20. Uh, is Revelation 20? Yes. And when Satan's ear are expired and shall be loosened out of his prison, shall future, shall go out and to deceive the nation which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. And the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went out of breath. Sand of the sea. It's like a huge army. The Roman army. Well, it said that in the epistles. 
They literally said, though Israel is as the sand of the sea, a remnant will be saved. Uh, Israel was as the sand of the sea back then. No. Sand of the sea. That's what the epistles said. I'm not the one saying that. Yeah, see, Tony, we use the actual Bible. What are you talking about the actual Bible? We use the Bible. We use Scripture. The temple was destroyed on the last day. It was after the vials. It was after the trumpets, after the seals. During the vials, the temple was destroyed. Chapter 19. It's made desolate in one hour. We see the Lord coming back. Tony, that's what I keep asking you. What prophecy is outside of what happened in that temple? Everything was about that temple and that age. You this can't is Romans 9, 27. It says, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant I'm shall sorry. be saved. Revelations 19, I saw heavens open. Hold a white horse, see that set upon. This is the Lord coming back again. Could be a second yeah. time, third time. He doth judge and make war, and his eyes were as the flamey fire. This is uh, this is what we call the uh, concrete Messiah, who's going to come and destroy uh, Israel's enemies. Israel's enemies were unbelieving Israel. God told them, or Jesus told them. He said, "Here said the wisdom of God: God will send you apostles and prophets." And some you shall slay, and some you shall persecute, that all the blood of all the prophets, from the blood of Abel until the blood of Zacharias, shall be required at the hands of this generation. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And in mystery Babylon, he said, Rejoice over her, you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And she was left desolate. Okay, so, and in verse 19, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Okay, that did not happen in 70 AD. This is still something that is uh, quite relevant and moving forward. Okay, it that has not come to happen. Hmm? That happened. No. Mm. Not, you don't have any history to prove that. Yeah, for have. over one million Jews died just the day the temple was in one day. This is one of the bloodiest, maybe the bloodiest day that has ever happened in this world. Blood was so high that it was coming out of the city like a wine press. In history, they said the blood was so high that it quenched the fires in Israel. The Romans were waiting in it. Over one million just on the day the temple was destroyed. Okay. Here, there were is, millions of Jews destroy. back then. This is going to huh? destroy you. This is going to destroy you because you're you're not making sense. Okay, this is here is Jesus coming back and going to destroy the armies. This is Jesus coming back with his with his saints with his hundred million uh, 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 followers, saints, angels, and he's going yeah. to destroy. In seventy A.D. You're seeing the destruction of Jerusalem. That's this all is, the Bible is, ever talks no, about. It never no, talks about no, anything else. Not in this verse here. This verse is specifically saying that Jesus is going to come and he is going to fight against the army that is going to attack Jerusalem. That's what it says here. And the war against him that's set on the horse against his army. Whose army? The Lord's army. So, right. so this yeah. is here, God coming back. And he's going to destroy the Israelites' army. This one, he's coming back to their defense. And the 70 AD is the destruction of Jerusalem. This year, he is... He Where is did Jesus prophesy anything other than the destruction of Jerusalem? Give me one prophecy of Jesus. I'm just telling you, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together. Yeah, to make, I can explain that to you. Him. That sat on the the horse against his army. 
This I can explain that to you. Oh, you're not going to explain but... it because it's plain. It is quite plain that this is Jesus defending the Jews, and he's coming back with his army to defend the Jews. In 70 AD, no. there is no Jesus defending the Jews. Jesus is Jesus. letting them be destroyed. So you're wrong. Jesus you're wrong. defended the believers. No. How did he defend he the told, believers? He destroyed the unbelievers. He never prophesied anything except for the destruction of Jerusalem. He said there would be great wrath upon this people, the Jews. You don't have a single prophecy from Jesus about anything except for the destruction of Israel. And all of what Jesus prophesied happened within 40 years in that generation. And everything in the Old Testament prophesies the exact thing. There's no prophecy outside of the siege of Jerusalem. None. Zero. Oh, Zil. This is in defense. Jesus is coming back in defense. This verse here and this entire chapter from verse uh, not 11 to 21 is disgusting. The Lord's coming back in the right. defense of Jerusalem. The you were have now with this they died first. No, no, it's not possible. It is not. You're, 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 you're distorting it. You're you, and, 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 and. You're not who are these at the wrath of the Lamb? Who are these arrayed in white robes? These are they which came out of great tribulation and loved not their lives unto the death. And I looked, and on Mount Zion a Lamb stood, and a hundred and forty-four thousand with him, and they followed the Lamb whithersoever he went. These were caught up into the clouds to meet him in the air. They were a spiritual army that came back in the clouds with Christ, to destroy unbelieving Israel. Rejoice over her, you holy apostles and prophets, for I have avenged you on her. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Jesus said, For a prophet cannot die outside of Jerusalem. He said, Here said the wisdom of God, God will send you apostles and prophets, and some you will slay, and some you will persecute, that all the blood of all the prophets may be required at the hands of this generation. <laughs> They came back in the clouds with Christ to destroy unbelieving Israel who killed Christ, who killed their own prophets, who killed the apostles. Okay, we're okay on that note. We're okay in that note. However, you're missing an element of prophecy that is still forthcoming. The prophecy in Revelation can't be forthcoming. The dead in Christ were waiting under the altar. The beast blasphemed his tabernacle. The beast was given power to continue 42 months. What happened to the beast? It fell by the edge of the sword and was led away captive. Revelation 13. He who kills with the sword must oh. be killed with the sword, and he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. The Jews fell by the edge of the sword, according to Jesus, and they were led away captive. That's the beast in Revelation. How did Jesus do that? By the Gentiles trampling the city underfoot for 42 months, Jesus Christ received the rod of iron. He got power over the nations of Rome to wield the rod of iron, the iron kingdom, and a heathen army destroyed Israel. That's the whole book of Revelation. You've got the Gentiles, which are the rod of iron, destroying Israel. God put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to make her desolate and the temple being destroyed. That's everything Jesus prophesied about. Emotive. What's emotive? Huh? I don't know. I didn't read it. What are we reading here? I don't see the word emotive. I don't know what you mean. Man, the front porch pulpit, man, just tell the truth for a minute. I don't deny Jesus Christ. I say what he said. All the stuff that he prophesied about happened in that generation. Tell me something that Jesus prophesied about that did not already happen. Okay, I, I recommend you go read Hell Ladensy's book. And it will, if you ever pick it up on the, on the Amazon, it tells you. Oh, the no, no. Yes, we yes. need 
with the Bible. We need to stick with scripture. We're not reading a man writing a book about what the Bible is supposed to say. We go by what the Bible actually does. This verse 17 to 21. <sighs> Tony, I love you, man. You're grasping at straws. Bro. It's You're describing Armageddon, a, a period of time that is still not, uh, not here. I'm sorry. I can't. The reason we it's called agree. Armageddon. So we're going to agree to disagree. So either you, I know I'm right. So I can say it's called I'm Armageddon understand. because of the language. It is referring to the Battle of Megiddo. The Megiddo, the Battle of Megiddo Armageddon. that happened 1400 years before Christ, where the, with Canaan by the Jews' promised land. It's yes, referring to that battle. And it was all of Israel being gathered together, and Rome called up ten legions of soldiers. Israel came for Passover from all over the world. Rome trapped them in the city and destroyed them exactly like Jesus said. They built a wall around them. Jesus said in Luke, he said, since you didn't know the time of your visitation, the armies are going to come and can pass thee round. Dig a trench about thee, keep thee in on every side, and lay thee even with the ground and your children within thee. And he said, not one stone would be left upon another. And then he said, and you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Because that happened back then. That was his coming, the wrath on Jerusalem, who killed Jesus Christ. They killed the last prophet. That's why he said, fill ye up the works of your fathers. Kill me. He said, you killed the prophets. The wrath came on them. That's why Peter told them, he said, God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and how to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment. He knew how to keep them alive until the day of judgment. That's why they that pierced Jesus saw him and wailed because of him. That's why Jesus told the priest of the Sanhedrin, after this, you will see me coming in the clouds. That's why he told the daughters of Jerusalem that they would see the wrath in their lifetime. Under the wrath of the Lamb, it said they cried for the mountains and rocks to fall on them. Jesus I'm and sorry. Luke, whenever he's going uh, I, to the I, cross. I can't, dear, I cannot be a preterist. I'm sorry. It just doesn't drive with me. None of this stuff that you're saying, actually. I get that is the saying that people say whenever they know that it's starting to make sense and they don't no, want to No, do that makes no sense to me. Tony, 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 Tony. Derek asked you about 10 minutes ago to show him one prophecy that Jesus said that has anything to do with us today. That wasn't fulfilled. Just one. And show you you one. Jumped, no, listen, you jumped around in scriptures and then you came up to a Hal Lindsey book. Because you need to show one one scripture that Jesus said that it would be two thousand years later, just one. That's Derek asked you this ten minutes ago. I, I'm going to hold you down. I love you, man, but I'm going to hold you down. Show one scripture where Jesus prophesied for two thousand years, man. Just one. Just one. These people, thousand years. Two thousand years. Hmm. That he show one prophecy that somebody would take something would take two thousand years. Yeah, show one prophecy that Jesus talked about that would take two thousand years to happen. Just one. Well, the book of Revelation is one that has not taken place, and this is almost two thousand years. What scripture, Tony? He said, "Steal not the words of the book of this prophecy, for the time is at hand." He said, "Hold that fast what you have already until I come." Book. Even this part he said, the, the bunk John, write the things which must shortly come here, to pass. This book here was written in about, uh, um, the book of Revelation was written in 90 AD. So that kind of uh, uh, no. more or less destroyed any a preterist concept. It is, no. not, it is not a 60 yeah, that's not prior. True. Yes, it that's, is. I have it written. This book was written by John at, at uh, 90 AD. You 90 have. AD it was written. Or there actually, about between 80 to 90 AD. So these prophecies. Irenaeus wrote the book of Revelation. And he didn't write that until 100 AD. Jesus Christ was 50 years old whenever he was crucified. No. He got the date that it was written in the 90s. No, he did say that. To, not according the to the same my... person that said it was written in the 90s. Yeah. Not, a, actually, Tony, not, not it, according to the research I did. Actually, Tony, it says 96 AD, not 90. It's actually 96 if you look at it, because that's what Irenaeus said. But, 
There was no temple standing in the 90s. John was told to rise to the temple, the altar, and them that worship there. The beast blasphemed his tabernacle. He's in a vision. It was man. left he's desolate in one he's hour. In a vision. He's in a came. vision. He's in a vision. So he, you could see well into the future, a vision of the past and, fit the, and present. The dead in Christ were waiting it's under the vision. altar. It's a vision. There were seven kings on the beast whenever Revelation was written. There were seven kings on the beast. He said, five have already fallen. One it's is ruling vision. now. It's not, and it's the not next some... one. He's seeing, he's into vision, he's seeing the future. It's not something that you can tangibly uh, uh, say, okay, he's, he's, you know, he's seeing the temple that was in Jerusalem. Not, that's not what's referenced. It's a vision that he's seeing. It's kind of like heaven he right said, but don't let into the court because the Gentiles will come and trample the city until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Right. That was back then. The Gentiles came and trampled that city. They left that temple desolate, man. Jesus did not prophesy of a future temple. Tony, do you believe in a third temple? Do you do you actually believe a third temple is going to... I mean, if it were to happen, do you actually believe a third temple is prophecy in the Bible? Uh, I've heard this many times. It's possible that a, a temple is going to be built. Um, I'm not sure, but well, I think there could be a temple that is going to be built by the Jews. Okay, well, that's fine. Eusebius, um, yes, I don't know anything about Eusebius. And uh, Arrhenius, I know, I don't even know much about Arrhenius. So. It just makes no sense. It makes more sense that he already returned. Do you be, do because you he was believe talking to those people then. That's part of prophecy. Excuse me? If, if, if like tomorrow, if they, if they build a third temple, do you believe that's part of prophecy? I know that I know there there there's a future kingdom that is coming. What are that uh, building the temple? And I've read books that says the temple they would rebuild the temple. Yeah, I'm sure with that guy. With it. I have that. There's not a kingdom me. coming on earth. But there, there's no kingdom on earth. I'm going to wait a prepared place for them. There is a kingdom on earth. Yeah, I'm going to hold you down. The third temple. No, no, you would wait a prepared place for them, and where he was, they would be also. The reward was in heaven. Flesh and blood didn't inherit it. My kingdom is not of this world. The kingdom of God comes without observation. Okay. You can't say, "Look, it's I in the sea," or "Look, it's here." The book of Isaiah. It's a heavenly city. Show you that there was uh, the lamb lying with the uh, with the lamb lying with the lion, whatever, and so forth, and the child. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. in New Jerusalem. That's in the yeah. heavenly city. That's in that is the Jerusalem that is still coming. How is it still coming? And where is it going to go? You believe it's going to be on Earth? It's going to be on Earth. Jesus is going to sit on the, on the, on the in the temple on in Jerusalem, and he will rule for a thousand years, while Satan is locked up for a thousand. That is years. exactly what the man of sin did. <laughs> That's exactly what the man of sin did. Uh. So, Tony, you, you believe Isaiah, that there's going to be a new Isaiah heaven? New earth. So you honestly believe there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So God didn't create heaven or earth the way it should have been. So he needs to create new ones? Yeah, because this one's corrupt. Behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered. The former. This is the former. Uh, and this is uh, Isaiah 64. Uh, Nor come into mine. But you be glad, rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create a new Jerusalem, a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem. Say that again, though. A new Jerusalem. Yes. He's not talking about the new earth. As the new heaven and the new earth stand before him, he will create new Jerusalem. He's talking about the new Jerusalem, which was heavenly. They looked for a home whose builder and maker was God, a city. It said in Hebrews that if Abraham and them knew how to get back, if they had been mindful of Eden, they would have gone back to Eden. But now they have a new hope, a heavenly city. Chapter 12 of Hebrews said, uh, heavenly Jerusalem, a mount that cannot be touched. Jesus went away to prepare a place for them that when he came back there, they could be also with him. My kingdom is not of this world. You cannot say, look, it's here in the sea or look, it's over there. Because it's a heavenly kingdom. Flood and blood don't inherit it. He's not ruling this earth. All right. And, and Tony, 
Do you do you obey all six hundred and something laws? No. Okay. Matthew five eighteen. Until heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle will be removed from the law. Uh, it is I can scroll through scripture, but uh, that uh, we are not under the law. Dude, I don't even own a Bible. I I do this by memory. Oh, well, you should. I'm not as good as Derek. I'll never. I can't even touch him, dude. And you're actually way more knowledgeable than I am with the Bible. Um, I give it to you. I mean, Cube Cube's way more knowledgeable, but knowledge doesn't mean anything. So let me ask you. Um, so heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle will be removed from the law. I don't know, I don't know what Q teaches. Me. I've I've heard him say things that I'm not absolutely certain what the heck he's teaching. But are you obeying the law? Because if you're not, I'm not under five, the law. Matthew five eighteen, no, not one jot or tittle until heaven and earth pass away. Not one jot or tittle. That temple passed away. Many jots and tittles passed because it's over. Yeah. So unless you're obeying, obeying all the laws, which you can't do because the temple is destroyed, you have no ability to. Not under the law. law. Not justified by the law. But that's not what it says. Hey, Romans, that's not what it says. Romans, it's Romans 5 1. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Cube, I give it to you. Paul was an asshole. <laughs> what? Now, why would you say that? That's a revile comment. Come on. He's not it here. To defend him. It was a joke. Tony, you would be living right. If you lived before 70 AD, Tony, you would understand the Bible and you'd be living right. But after 70 AD, you're rejecting everything that Jesus already did, man. Romans if 8, you Romans lived back 8, then, there is if you were being no written to, which you are in Christ Jesus, walk not. That was true to them back then. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of a sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So we're not under the law. Yeah. Right, you were right. If you were a Gentile yeah. living back then, you would be exactly right, but you're not living back then. Paul is not writing to you and saying, gather yourselves together the more so as you see the day approaching. Peter's not telling you that the end of all things is at hand and that you're looking and hasting to the day of God Almighty. Uh, Paul isn't telling you, may God preserve your whole body, souls, and spirits until the coming of the Lord. If you were living back then, you would be saying the right things. But you're not living back then. Tony, do you believe that Jesus is going to return for you in your lifetime? Yes, yes correct. May, no, I wouldn't say he, he may or may not. So I would not be quite foolish to say that. Uh, okay, uh, but are you are you going to put up your wife as though you have none? Are you going to stop going to Walmart and buying, you know, uh, beefaroni and stuff like that? You're not going to stock provisions? And be sober-minded because time is short, time is here, time is now, time is at hand. Yeah, time All is at hand. Time is at hand. It, yeah, you have to understand, these people were being pushed into, this is going to happen right here, right now, within your generation. Put up your wives as though you have none. Do not stop provisions. That's how time, that, that's how short the time was. I mean, it was now. You can't show any you can't show any scripture that goes past that. The time is at hand. The time is short. The time is now. In their generation. In their generation. Not ours. Their generation. So either Jesus lied to them or he lied to us. And you're not going to have it both ways. Either he stood in front of he's putting everything under this 70 Hold on, hold on. Either he stood in front of his apostles, the ones that he loved, the ones who journeyed with him and went through all of these things with him, saw the miracles that he performed. Are you telling me that he lied to those people? No. Never told Then explain when he said, the time is short, the time is at hand, 
all of these things. There's timestamps on every single thing that Jesus said. He's he was saying now, yeah, right now. Don't believe it, because the Bible says there are. Do you think Jesus is impossible to time? time. You, you're you're umbrelling everything in one specific time. Uh, uh, there are dispensations of time. No, there's no living time. That's, that's no, Jesus that's, came. Exactly. Jesus came at the fullness of the dispensation of time. Yes, that's Ephesians uh, Ephesians uh, one ten. In that dispensation, the fullness. Yeah, of there's time no more dispensations of time. And one, and one all, in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven. Which which are on earth is we are living in a specific dispensation of time. We call this time of grace. This is the time of the church. We call it the time of grace, the dispensation of grace. This is what we're in. This is what you guys not not getting. Once the dispensation of grace is ended, then um, we see another dispensation uh, uh, creeping up. And it will be dispensation of the millennium. Let's break it into dispensation. When you do that, you're getting into Trinity doctrine and everything else. It's man-made doctrine. Let's stick with the Bible. Let's stick with, with what Jesus actually said to his apostles, to the people around him. Let's stick with that because he was talking to those people in that generation. That's why he said this generation. He didn't say a future generation. He said this, this, this generation shall not pass until all things written are fulfilled. He wasn't speaking to a future generation ever, ever, never, never did Jesus speak to a future generation. He spoke to them. So show me one scripture where Jesus prophesied outside of speaking to the people who were in front of him. He told them exactly, dude, you need to hurry up. This is going to happen. The apostles went to him. Lord, when will the end of the age be? He said, when the gospel has been preached to every creature upon earth. What does Paul say? Romans 10, 18, Colossians 1, 23, Acts 2, 5. Verily I say, which Paul I've been made a minister of, the Gospels and preach to every creature upon earth. So get around that. They asked him. You have to understand. Jesus was sitting there with them. These are the men that he loved. I mean, they spent 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He loved these men. I mean, they were together nonstop. So are you telling me when they when they came to him and they said, Lord, when will the end of the age be? And he told them flat out, when the gospel has been preached to every creature upon earth. And then when Paul comes in, he verifies it three times. So about either, six or seven times, but yeah. Well, I know well, those are the three big ones. But you know, and he it's so Rome, even, he told Rome, I thank my God your faith is heard throughout the whole earth. He told Timothy that by his voice all the Gentiles have heard the gospel. So, Tony, who is lying? Someone, if it hasn't happened, there's a lie somewhere. There's, there's definitely a lie. Who was the liar? That's what you need to show us. Who was the liar? Because we, we, we know all of these words. We know all of these scriptures. But within that, someone was telling a lie if you don't believe that it didn't happen. You see, Jesus and the apostles told the truth. They were true prophets. Everybody that came after them have said, this generation will not pass until all these things are fulfilled. They've all been liars. Jesus wasn't Eight. lying whenever he said it. The apostles mm -hmm. weren't lying whenever they said it. But everybody Eight that came dead. after have been lying. Eight billion dead people said Jesus is coming soon. And Tony, how was Christianity started? Before 70 AD, Jesus told them not to pick up a sword and not to fight. After 70 AD, armies were created to spread Christianity through uh, unaliving people. So how is that the gospel? That's the gospel that you're preaching today, which is it, it, it's sick and violent. They were told, don't fight. After 70 AD, Constantine and all those... They created armies of murderers. 
So explain how that would be Jesus when he told them, hey, dude, don't fight, man. This is happening right here, right now. It's going to happen. So don't pick up your sword. Don't fight against anyone because it's going to happen right here and right now. But after 70 AD, there was armies upon armies upon armies spreading the so-called gospel across the universe, which created how many atheists? I get you. I know you do, because I'm speaking the truth. There, there's nothing that you can uh, say. You're speaking me. partial truth. You're a partial predator speaking partial truth. I bring no, you I'm a partial a, predator. Because... You're going to label me. I'm a full predator. Tony, you do this all the time. It annoys me because don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do because this. not everything is truthful here in this predator teaching. There's no way. It's not possible. I'm still waiting yeah. for my Messiah. My Messiah. And Savior, it's not, he's not me, you're, not you're, you're binding, binding me to believe in something. Oh, my God. No Tony, relevance. he's not your Messiah. Tony, what he's happened not your to the Jews has no relevancy to me. He only You're came right. for the Jews. He came for he only came for... The Bible he, says no, he, he came for the Gentiles. I can show you where he says he came for oh the Gentiles. Oh, my God. I came for he the lost sheep. He came for the Gentiles. Huh? Yeah. Jesus came to the Gentiles through Paul. Yeah, yeah through Paul. But he I only came... At least that all yeah. saints, this grace that I have preached among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. He's preaching the unsearchable riches, something that you can't search of, and it's a mystery yeah. to us. Okay. All so the Gentiles came in before the remnant of Israel was saved. Acts chapter the twelve 20, apostles, 26, verse seventeen. Acts chapter twenty-six. Jesus tells um, tells Paul to rise up. He says, "Rise, stand up upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose." To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of things which shall be appear unto thee. And he tells them Paul that was, he is sending them the liberty from the people and from the Gentile to whom now I send thee. He's Paul send was the apostle to the, the Gentiles. Deliver yeah. them, and he's handing them, he's going to send them to the Gentiles. Yeah, the Gentiles came in. But the Gentiles came in before the remnant of Israel was saved. <laughs> Like Paul said, he said the gospel of uncircumcision was committed unto him just as the gospel of circumcision was committed to Peter. God, Jesus came and got 12 apostles and he sent them out to seal up the 12 tribes of Israel and he sent Paul to the Gentiles. They went out. The 12 apostles went out and 5,000 were added to the church this day and 4,000 were added to the church this day. And the Lord God added as many as would be added and half of cities believed and whole cities believed. And they said, you see how many thousands of Jews there are, brethren, that believe and they're zealous of the law. They sealed up that 144,000 back then. Paul said that by his mouth, all the Gentiles had heard the gospel. Okay. Well, they had to come in before the remnant was saved. Before the 12,000 from each tribe was saved, the Gentiles came in. Okay. I have one thing to... Uh... I hope it's a good one, Tony. It better be it better be the scripture that just debunks everything. It better be a good one, bro. Yeah. Then go to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. So Paul was called for that purpose. I'm still preaching that same message. That's what we're doing today. All right, you let me down. Hey, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that? No, no, because I don't dispute you at all. I believe you. Paul was to the Gentiles. But the apostles went to Jesus and said, Lord, when would the end of not the world, the end of the age be? He said, when the gospel has been preached to every creature upon earth. I just did this five minutes ago. Romans 10, 18, Colossians 1, 23, Acts 2, 5. And there's many more verses, but these are just the ones that I use because they're the most dominant ones that the gospel had been preached, not has, had, had at that time been preached to all the creatures upon all of the earth. So this, again, we're in the same scenario. Who is a liar? Either Paul failed and just his ego was bigger, like Cube would say, he had a big ego. Um, but somebody's lying. Some, who's the lying? Gospel, I don't know. Who's the, lying? The gospel was only to one generation. David said, yeah. who shall declare his generation? David said in Psalms 22. 
the one that is not uh, uh, the one is that is not breaking the bread correct. No, Psalms 22 said a seed would serve him. It would be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They would come and declare his righteousness. Peter said, you're a chosen generation, a holy priesthood, a, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, that you should show forth the praises of him that brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It was for one generation that the gospel was preached. That was it. That's why they were so adamant to get it out the way they did. That's why they said, put up your wife. As though you have none. Do not. He said the time stop. is short, brethren. Let yeah. those who have wives be as though they have none. He said, do not make provisions for the flesh. He said, um, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Cast off the works of darkness. Now is our salvation nearer than whenever we first believed. You are not in darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Gather yourselves together the more so as you see the day approaching. Make your moderation known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Yet a little while, and he who tarries will not tarry, but will come. Cracking everything into credit. No, you can't do that, buddy. You can't do what? It. You're branding everything in the 70 AD. You little children, it is the last hour. You've heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. Do not huh? ask uh, uh, about, uh, David, what are you doing here still? Are you? Is this the new earth? Absolutely not. Yes, it is. Not, it, it is. No, it is. Nobody, right mind, mind. nobody in are their right mind. Nobody in their right mind would this. Are you obeying the law? Because until heaven and earth passed, you should be obeying every law. Are you obeying all six hundred and something laws? Because if heaven and earth didn't pass, then you need to be obeying every law. No, and the Lord you, smelled a sweet, law. and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, "I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Not neither will I law, again, neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done." Who said we're under the law? We're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. <laughs> God said he would never destroy man off the face of the earth again. Instead, he sent a redeemer. Oh, he's going to. There will be an outer, an outer destruction coming. That's the call. Oh, dear Lord. God Eschatology. literally gave you a rainbow to tell you that he would not Peter destroy man fire, off the face of the earth. The yeah. All right. Well, let's do God this. literally um, swore. God do? swore. That he would not destroy man off the face of the earth again. Tom, they don't want to listen. They don't want to. They don't want to listen to me. So, I'm going to drop off. But it was, uh, Derek is really well. Tom, uh, well, no. Why don't, why don't? Why don't? Why? No, you should stay here, Tony. He has enough followers. Why don't you let him? Yeah, who? Tom. Yeah, Tom. Let him join or Nate. They both oh, have enough followers. Why are they not up here having this discussion? They want to make comments. But both of them have enough followers to get up here and have this discussion because you, you have limited within the comments. Because they think it's redundancy, this redundancy of the same topic we cover every week, every day. We're covering oh, trust predators. Me. We're battling predators. But the, the only difference predators. is we don't, we don't say read how Lindsay's book. We say, look at this scripture, look at that scripture. We go biblically. We don't say, look at Hal Lindsey's book or, you know, we don't go outside of that, man. <laughs> because, like I said, um, he told them, flee Judea, okay? Look up, your redemption draws nigh. So I guess if Jesus didn't return, I guess they looked up and Jesus like, psych! <laughs> I mean, you can't have this both ways. I keep telling you this. You've had no rebuttal, Tony. I love you, brother. Well, I do. But you have no rebuttal. It doesn't matter how much rebuttal I give you. You're not going to believe it. So, so I find it. Because you have it futile. In. It is futile. Luke 21. No, it's futile. Luke 21. 20, Luke 21. 21, 24. 24. I did tell you that Luke, that verse does not specify the time of the Gentile. You said it's 42 months. 40 to two and a half months, whatever it is, right? Um, because it goes back to Revelation, well, the time is going to two months. 
Excuse me, Tommy. Let, let, let me reply to Tommy real quick. Is Michael right, Tommy? Right. Read that whole passage about Michael, Peter. Michael, a predator. Whenever Peter said that the elements would melt with the fervent heat, that word "elements" means rudiments. It's like saying I went to a movie, but I didn't like certain elements of it. He said, and he said after that they were looking and hasting to the day of God Almighty. And he said that their judgment, their wrath that had tarried for a long time would not tarry anymore. It was coming on them swiftly. He said they would get swift destruction. We got Michael here. Just Michael. Hey, Derek. Tony. Happy. Yeah, you, Michael. So, Michael, what's, you your, what's your view on all these guys? I don't know. You tell me. My hey, free-for-all. I don't know if you heard me say that or if God revealed that to you, but that is exactly what's happening. That is what's coming in our age, man. <clears throat> That's Mike, what God told me to preach. Predators? He said it's about this war, and in that Temple Mount will be destroyed, and finally these three Abrahamic religions will fall. I think Tony. I don't know if me. God told you that or if you heard me, but uh, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, but remember, Free Fall actually went to Jerusalem, and he actually stood there. He he was, you know, he he did this for a couple or a couple days. He was a, uh, you know, he went to Jerusalem. He stood on the Temple Mount. And it never dawned on him. It took him what? What can five years? Five years to, for you to realize the temple was destroyed. It's all over. Mm -hmm. Ken's got a beautiful story. I wish he could come on. He's got a beautiful story. Did you yeah, ask me a question, Tony? Yeah, I wanted to find out if you're also a uh, predator, uh, uh, you know, believer or whatever you want to call it. An advocate yeah, I, of the Frederick's movement. I, uh, free for all. You know what my I just here, this is what my book was called before I edited it in 2017. You wrote, book, type you, it like, uh, you wrote a book like Jeff? He's written a couple written books, dude. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right oh, Tony, you gotta check out his books. Tony, you seriously have to check out all of Derek's books. They're on Amazon. Oh uh -huh. no, he never told me that. This is the first. Anyways, I, and Mike, Michael was going to say something. Oh, go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry. They mean to no, interrupt. That's all right, man. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I, I lean towards what they call preterism just because um, as a simple person reading the Bible, if I'm going to take timestamps literally without twisting them into anything confusing, um, I mean, if, if Jesus looked at specific people and said things that were time specific i think we have to take that as it is without trying to doctrine it into something else right um so i think that's kind of like a slippery slope because i used to be um you know a couple years back i was 100 percent full you know holy spirit bible thumping up you know hat super happy jesus is coming back soon and then when i started reading into it um, I was, some things just didn't line up. And then I actually came across Derek on TikTok and I was like, oh, this freaking loser. I was like, I'm going to disprove this guy, you know? And I was, I was like going to start making videos and then I started reading it and I was like, oh man, this is the stuff that I was having problems with. And I can't debunk this without saying, well, he didn't mean that to the people he said it to. And the more I looked into it, I just went, wow, this is pretty interesting. And it's it's cool to me because it just makes the Bible really simple without adding anything else. It does, doesn't it? And I have a similar story. When the truth came out of that, and I prayed to God for the truth. I'm like, something is wrong here. There's something just It doesn't make sense. And I prayed to God for the truth. I think it was like two days later, I found Eric. And when I saw his video, I was like, I'm going against this man. I'm going to prove him wrong. He's not making sense <laughs> to me. I couldn't prove him wrong. And I, I, I mean, and then we ended up talking. I'm like, I can't even prove him wrong because there's nothing like Tony's going through right now. He can't prove him wrong. He's full in scripture, but he can't prove it wrong. Jesus oh, never oh, prophesied oh, oh. in years. Yeah, it's just there's like certain things that just wouldn't make sense. And even like, you know, thinking about how we, you know, when I was a dispensationalist, I was looking at, you know, oh, yeah, the world's going to get destroyed. And then certain things with that thought didn't line up. I'm like, well, why is he telling them to flee Judea if the entire planet's going to get nuked anyways? Right. And then I was like, right. wait a minute, the the army that comes and destroys Jerusalem is going to remain the strongest army for many generations? Well, how does that work if the planet's been nuked, you know? 
it's just things that doesn't line up with um, the original teachings that I heard. It just doesn't quite line up with what scripture has to say. Not even close. It's not even close. Uh, and if you go back to Zechariah 12, uh, sorry, it, it, sorry. my spirit it, will not allow me perfect. to conform to any preterist. Uh, 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 I mean, I do, I do believe in the 70 AD uh, prophecy. There has, there's some validity there, but uh, when it comes down to uh, become mm. a full preterist, that, that I don't think that will. It doesn't jive with me and my spirit. My spirit mm. is too strong. To 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 surrender to that to that to that teaching. I'm sorry. I'm just. I got to be honest with you, right? No, and that's, that's fine. Right. And you might have a good time trying to convince me. So I might right, not be. I might not be the appropriate candidate for you to teach this. Concept. We're not trying. Just, we're not trying to bring you in. This is not oh, a call. Well, and you, you are trying. Say. You are trying. No, no we're trying to tell you scripture. I don't, Tony. You can believe what you want to believe and leave this tomorrow. And we'll still we'll still talk. We'll still be friends. And I don't care what you believe. I talk to atheists. I talk to Satanists. I talk to all kinds of different religions of people. I'm still friends with them. That has nothing to do with it. We're just showing you scripture because you're trying Abraham. to show us what happened. Abraham did not even live two thousand years before Christ. Whenever Jesus came, he appeared once in the end of the world. What were the prophets written for? They were written for their admonition upon whom the ends of the world were come. The time was short. The time was at hand. They were in the last days. The spirit was poured out in the last days. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries. For you have heaped up treasures for the last days. The coming of the Lord draws nigh. <laughs> no way. All the last long prophets. And the time being on. short are two are longer. They're longer. The last days and the time being short is longer than the whole covenant of Abraham to Christ. Right. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I mean, I like talking to you guys, but in your view, I am a heretic. And um, hey, no, 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 I'm a heretic. <laughs> no, happy the heretic. Jeff <laughs> doesn't agree with that. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I still oh, love you, man. Uh, and, and we can have different beliefs, and I still love you, man. It has nothing to do with that, you know. You don't hurt my feelings. Okay. Well, but I think Derek think I heard his Luckily, I didn't because, keep hitting the... Uh, because I keep... Automatic <laughs> typing. I'm going to try to win him back. <laughs> I'm going to try to win him back. But I think uh, it's futile for me to say I can win Derek now. I've come to that conclusion. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. That's, that's futile. Derek. Yeah, definitely. D Derek has the truth. And, you know... Now that you told me he wrote two books on the Preterist... Uh, uh, the Preterist uh, Doctrine, if you, if I can call it that. I don't even know if it's a doctrine. Actually, Derek, don't you have three books? I think it's three, and you're writing another one right now? Okay, show me the books, uh, Derek. They're on Amazon. You can just type in my name on Amazon. Just type in Derek Jester, or just type it in on Google. Okay. Did it, it was a best-selling <laughs> book, or just people? People are not going to... Best-selling in his category. One yeah. of them got on a best-selling list in one of its categories. Yeah, it got to like number nine whenever I first uh, put it out there on it. But that was just in one category. It wasn't like a bestseller on like all the. I know, see here. It says like uh, every book. Christian ended in seventy A.D. The Kindle edition. Yeah, yeah it wasn't like New York Times bestseller here. <laughs> well, it's not going to be because. Uh, Mainstream religions are not going to, um, not going to uh, bow down to a preterist concept. Not at all. I mean, the entire yeah, Catholic the Pharisees whole thing would just die. The Pharisees wouldn't bow down to a Jesus concept either. Yeah, <laughs> and we're not trying to change an entire culture. It wasn't we're... mixed with faith. It wasn't mixed with faith. faith in them that heard it, so they didn't believe. It yeah. must be. He must be quite a writer. Uh, uh, to write a book, you have to be quite uh, eloquent. And you don't think... Oh, there's so many edit mistakes in that. Yeah. <laughs> he says, pretend we are a fig tree. <laughs> I'm not a fig tree. Tony, I think Derek can read the New Testament back.